Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Q&A session with Jason Morgan and Colin Bradley. I'm Stephen Bradley, Colin's son, and I'd just like to thank you all for joining us. Uh, we are so excited. Thank you so much for all of your questions. We're going to cover as many as we can. We're just going to keep going, um, maybe split it up in a few videos, um, but we're just going to see how it goes. So firstly, thank you, Dad, for, My pleasure. for agreeing to do this, and thanks, Jason. Welcome. It's great to be here. We've got loads of interesting questions, and I can't wait to, to answer a few of them and hear what Colin's got to say as well. Fantastic. Okay, so let's kick right off with the first question from Deborah. Which pastel pencils would you recommend? So, Jason, we'll fire that over to you first. Well, um, to, to begin with, to start out with, uh, th this question on its own could go on for an hour. So I'm going to keep my answer short and sweet, and I'm going to say... Carbothello would probably be my number one. Um, Pit Pastel Pencils would be my number two. Just because people, I think, when they start with pastel pencils, they usually want some fine some form of detail in their work. Both those pencils, a little bit harder than some of the others, such as Karen Dash and Gioconda, which can bring with it their um, own issues of sharpening sometimes as well. So. My two favourites are the Pit and the Carbothello. That's cutting in nice and short. Nice, nice. What about you, Dad? Well, my, I used to use Carbothello when I first started out, Jason. I probably don't uh, know that. But when I first started, I worked with uh, in conjunction with Swan Stabilo, who make the Carbothello. Yeah. And I did a lot of demonstrations for him. So I was well into Carbothello. And it wasn't until uh, sort of about three years in that uh, I was introduced to the Faber Castell. They were new then, brand new. They hadn't. Uh, so just... how long ago would that have been? Sorry. How long ago would that have been? Not me. That was not. Uh, I want to show your age, but I'm. I am interested actually in. I think it was probably the late eighties. Right. Think. Okay. I think. Uh, I, I so they were actually that. out before then. I, I was using them for, I reckon I was using them for about five years, six years. Okay. Uh, the Carvathello ones. The Carvathello. Yes, yeah, the Bilo ones, yes. Yeah, right. Carvathello, yeah. And then I was introduced to Faber, and I found those to be, uh, uh, there was two reasons why that. One is Faber can still offer me a better proposition than Carvathello did. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Uh, so that was one incentive. They promised a lot of things, and they kept to it, uh, so I did very well. But the other reason is I found that the, the paper Castell pit pastel pencils yeah. just tipped the uh, Carbothello. However, I've got to say that I like both. So if I had a one and two, it would be the other way around. I would say Faber Castell would be my favourites. Yeah. And Carbothello would come close to second. I also like Creticolor. The only trouble with Creticolor can be that the sharpening side of it. Thing. Yes. Every now and again, you can chip them off and uh, yep. it's a bit expensive. Yeah, Karen Dash, I love Karen Dash. I think they're great, but they, quite rightly, they do tend to be a bit soft, but there are places for them and I use all of them. Yeah. I was, the first ones I bought were um, Carbothello. Then I bought the Pit. I was given to me by Derwent their full set. I didn't particularly fall in love with those, although they've got a couple of nice colors in there um then i got the geoconda because they are really punchy and really colorful so if you're doing things like butterflies and flowers they, they go that bit of extra punch then than say a pit and a carbothello and i kept holding off with a karen dash all the time because of the price to start with wow. and from my background i'm you know i'm taught to kind of be a bit more um frugal with my art supply. So I always held off and people were all saying how fantastic they were. So I bought a couple. I bought the black and I bought the white and the black was really black and the white was really right, white. So that was good, but they were soft. So I bought a couple of other colors that were good in there. They're very dark browns because as you know yourself, to get a really rich, ready brown is pretty much impossible with the pencils. It doesn't go that dark and that rich at the same time. And eventually I, I shelled out and I bought the Karen Dash and I was absolutely disappointed with the um, 
quality of them because a lot of them had like a very hard grit in them, which shocked me. A little tiny piece of like grit and dissolved pigment or something like that. And um, to the point that it could easily ruin the pastel matte surface or any other paper surface because it was that scratchy on the end. In the end, I had a few emails back and forth to them and um, didn't get a massive amount of joy and sent them back. So I just selected a few pencils out of there. But for me, it just shows the best is not always the most expensive either. You know, it's just, just what you like. I've seen some fantastic work done with Jess Karen Dash, but I've also seen it done with the cheaper ones. Creta mm. Color, I emailed them a little while ago because I got a small set of those. I like their colors as well. They're hardish pencils, so not that, not that different to pit. Like I said, the uh, sharpening could be a bit of an issue, but I couldn't find any data at all on light fastness with them, nothing at all. So uh, that was a little bit of problem I had with that. Interesting, interesting. Um, I didn't have any information about the light fastness with Creta Color. No, no, I don't. No, no. no. Uh, interesting you say about Geoconda. We've not not had those, not um, used those. Have you, have you not used them? I've not used them. The, the, the problem that we got, Jason, is that I've got um, the whole set of all four. So, yeah. Faber, Creta Color. So, I haven't exactly. used them all, but I've used a lot of them. Yeah. And uh, I think I've got enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Otherwise, you spend so much time selecting your pencils, you're not, not actually drawing. You, it can get quite confusing, especially for beginners. Yes, I think so. Especially, exactly. And this is what we're doing. We're introducing um, uh, people into the plastic pencil world. You don't want to give a, an endless uh, amount of manufacturers. I think yeah, to stick exactly. to the ones that we know, and, and um, you and I both kind of go along the same line. Yeah, exactly right, yeah. With, with Faber um, and uh, Swans. And so I, I think this is probably the right way of doing it, that people find out for themselves if they want to try something Good point, else. yes, good point. And, and you can also now buy, buy the old pencil like you did with Karen Dash. Yeah, so yeah. Just buy a couple of pencils and try them out, rather than buying a whole set, which uh, could be pricey. Yeah, Fantastic. exactly. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Deborah. Um, Long-winded answer for that, but we we got there. Yeah, that was actually the short answer. I held yeah. myself back. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, moving on to the next one from Lana. I'd love to hear about uh, how you and Colin got started, and if there were any particular artists that inspired you. Um, let's. And we sort of touched upon a little bit actually about how you got started with pastel pencils specifically, but. Mm. Um, perhaps give a short answer to this because we we discussed in our in the early episodes of our podcast mm. your story in a bit more detail but perhaps give an abridged version mm. for this yes i will well I, I came from a watercolor background that was my first love so um i wanted really to i was asked to do an animal um, by a friend of mine and it was a dog and i said well i'll try i tried in watercolor couldn't couldn't do it and and long story short, I came across a Carbothello, a box of Carbothello. And I thought for some reason, well, I give this a go for a dog. And I tried it, I liked it. And from then on, I was smitten by it. So that's how I actually got started with the pastel pencils. And were there any artists that inspired you to? Oh, artists. Well, again, weirdly, I, I was a great lover of John Constable's uh, yeah. pictures. Uh, I went to the National Gallery when I was. Uh, well, not that young, but I went there and I fell in love with his paintings. He was my kind of artist. and uh, But I never ended up doing oil, funny enough. I tried it. I did try oil and I tried uh, uh, acrylic and I just couldn't get on with them. So I stuck to watercolour and uh, from then on it, uh, it progressed from there. Yeah. That was really my inspiration right from the beginning. And I ended up doing the John Constable picture of the hay, uh, not the Hayway, what was it, the cornfield, uh, with the on um, pastel map with the um, pastel pencils. Yeah. And uh, that I loved doing that. That was one of my. That was I reached my peak then, and um, I really felt that I'd uh, done John Constable. 
justice. You went full circle, didn't you? Then? It, I went full circle, for, yes. Well, that was quite <laughs> recently you did that run, wasn't it? That was uh, yeah. about four years ago, three four years ago. Yeah, three four years ago. About three, about, yeah, about three years ago I did that. And, uh, so perhaps, perhaps you're still at your peak then? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I've passed it now. I've um, I got, I've done an awful lot of work since then, but uh, it was nice to do something that uh, an artist that I actually did yeah. originally admire. Oh, and I still do, to a certain extent. That's how I feel about you. What about you, Jason? Completely the opposite. So I started with um, oils. Uh, basically, I've always loved looking at wildlife and wildlife art. And I went to a gallery in um, Gloucester, Nature and Art, I think it's called. And I saw some fantastic work there by Simon Coombs and John Banovich, which are two incredible, um, realistic wildlife artists. I could never, ever afford something like that on my wall. But um, I'd always been interested in art as a child. My mother always in, you know, pushed me or, or led me into it because she was quite artistic with crafts and knitting and needlework and tapestries. So I always did a bit with pencil and graphite. And once I saw those paintings, I, I really wanted to see if I could ever do anything like that. And um, at the same time on TV, it happened to be Bob Ross and he led a lot of people and gave them confidence to try oils, which people thought were just a kind of a master medium. And I did a couple of those. I got all the giant brushes, put uh, sheets on the floor in the living room for the paint splatter and the smell and all that. I did a few of those. They turned out okay. Give me the motivation, but I, I didn't want to be setting things up like that all the time and having that smell of turpentine in the living room because I wasn't in a studio like Bob Ross with a camera crew. So I did things a lot smaller, um, went into a spare bedroom and started doing that. While I was doing working uh, research and development in a factory, that was my job for 20 years. And at the same time, the internet started to take off. And that's it's, it's a weird thing because I found... 25 years ago when I was starting that, there was very little detailed instruction tutorial for art. Mm. There were a few books out there and a, a couple of videos because I was really into oil painting. So we had something like a video by um, John Seary Lester, but then they would be American videos. You couldn't really import them easily. Couldn't even find them because we didn't really have the internet. It was the first one or two or three years of the internet. So it was really difficult to learn. And I found when I kept ordering books, these tutorial books, that they would always jump massive stages. So you'd follow the first three stages and you think, I've got it. And then all of a sudden you'd be at the final thing and it looked completely different. And I had book after book on my shelves. So because I was also interested in photography, I started to take photographs of all my work as I was doing it step by step so that I could teach myself by my own lucky accidents and failures and, and things that worked, how I did it. So I was just documenting really everything that I was doing. And I thought, I'll try and build my own website. So I started doing that as well. And that's how that took off. Um, then video came in after five, six, seven years of that. And eventually I got to the 20 year mark in work in the factory. And I thought, if I don't go for this now, I'm never going to do it. So that was about 10 years ago that I did that. So I got into it completely the different way to call in. Um, the reason I got into pastels then, because oils is probably the most forgiving medium because you just can't make a mistake. All you've got to do is wait for it to dry and then just go over the top again. So I loved that. Um, and, and pastels then were the thing that was as near to oil painting as I could get by putting light over dark and that type of thing. But it was a lovely clean medium. So I could just pick it up, do five or 10 minutes, put my pencils down, go downstairs and then come back and do it again. So it was a nice, clean, easy medium to, to use the pencil. So I've been doing pastel pencils mostly now for about four years coming up, I think it is. So that's how I got into those. That's fantastic. That's so interesting as well. Like. Um, it, and we'll get into this with some of the later questions is looking at the style of work and the approach that you guys have is very reflective of your backgrounds, the oil background, the working from yeah. dark and putting on lights and yours, the watercolour background, which is 
uh, light to dark. It's, it's yeah, complete yeah. opposite. But the it, final result is not that dissimilar, but we get to it in a different way. It's absolutely brilliant. I, I find that so fascinating. And that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, like understanding both of the backgrounds. So lovely. Um, thanks, Lana, for the question. Um, June asks, have you learned anything from each other? Absolutely. We've just learned quite a lot of <laughs> each other. <laughs> I think that's the biggest difference, really, I suppose, for you guys to learn, you know, the other way of working and how that gives the same results, you know, that you get these fantastic results from. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot of art is personal preference. There are a couple of rules that you need to kind of follow along for things to work. But after that, there's a lot of, you know, variances and you you can really even I can do things in many different ways and get to the same results. So with Pastelmat, I did a video about a year ago to prove it. I use I did one video of a, a snow leopard's eye and a bit of the fur around it. It's just, it's just about three inch by three inch. For the underlayer on the one, I did pan pastels. For the other, I use just the pencils. On the next one, I use just sticks. And then I put pencils on the top of each one of them for the detail. And in the end, they all look exactly the same. Exact. I wouldn't even be able to tell what I'd done the underlayers with. So, you know, you can really get to the end result in many different ways. And that should give beginners confidence because after you get past the ugly stages, you know, it really comes along in the end. Yeah, yeah, that's that's also so interesting with your videos, like watching something, and, you, and even you have to say sometimes to the people watching now, I know this doesn't look like it's, you know, it's going well, but it is going well, and you'll get to a certain point, and then it'll trust me, change. Trust me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that just goes to prove how flexible a medium pastel is. Yes. Um, so that that should be a great incentive for anyone to pick up a pencil and give it a go. Um, lovely. Moving on to Deborah's question. Please name your top five tips. Um, probably what would be easy is if we combine the two of you guys. Exactly. Otherwise, yeah. we'll have tips coming out of our ears. Um, so Jason, if you fire away with one tip that, that might be great for people. Well, the first one I would say, and it's something that beginners make a lot of mistakes with, don't sharpen your pencils too much. Don't try to get a pin needle sharpened end like you could get with colored pencils because they just start breaking on the end. You can't really do that with pastel pencils. So you don't need to sharpen them that much. Okay, fantastic. Interesting. Dad, we... Come up the tip. I would say that the, the, the choice of paper is really critical. If you get the right paper, you're going to work. It's going to work. If you get the wrong paper, it's not going to work. And uh, generally speaking, we recommend if you're starting out as a beginner, you use one of the easier papers like um, Ombre and something like that. And that is forgivable. You can make mistakes and you can rub them out. But uh, certainly, um, when you get more proficient, I would say the pastel mat is my favourite. We also have done a, a few pictures on UART, so um, and that works the fine UART paper. Uh, so paper choice would be my uh, second tip. Have you worked with UART, Jason, at all? Yes. So you, my third tip, because we're adults and we can make um, discussions like this, my third tip would be paper as well. And I would say as a beginner, Definitely use pastel matte paper first because it's the most forgiving. Um, because you can layer upon layer on it. You can rub it off. If it, if it all goes wrong, you can get a wet rag and wipe it off completely. Dry with a hairdryer. You're back to square one. So my tip would be use pastel matte paper. So we can disagree. We can agree yeah. to disagree. Yeah, that's... Oh, yeah. I, I, no, I, I would... Um... Uh, the, the reason we we have come across this um, a few times with people trying pasma who are beginners haven't been successful with it. We've but, seen this on their Facebook page. And, yeah, but the, I think the thing they make mistakes with they're not putting enough layers on it. I know, but this, we're talking about layers. Beginners, you see, that when you're when you're starting out, Jason, you've got you, you're a little bit uneasy about going over balls and most people and I've, we've seen this a lot they don't put a, hardly anything on the paper they just no exactly right yeah 
where we know that that's not going to work. So yeah, exactly. this is why I tend to go along the, the Andre route to start with and then yeah. move into, because I've done a lot of um, a lot of work on Andre uh, right up until about three years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah very successfully and uh, we've had a lot of success with it so you know it's it's each to their own and i think that uh, without a doubt certainly paper is the yeah either the second or the second and third tip so yeah. i think if it, yeah or even the third and fourth but i'd say if you said on gray and i said pastel mat would we both agree then that if you're doing detailed animals which is kind of what we do or, or portraits that you wouldn't suggest as a start off one of the sanded papers, basically sand paper, because that's what they are. Well, I, I wouldn't know from, from a beginner. I wouldn't know, no. simply yeah. because we've seen the results of it uh, in, in the classes that we've done and the pictures. But uh, I, I would say that I certainly personally prefer pastel mat myself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's good. And, uh, uh, we've done a couple. I haven't done enough, I don't think, on you. Are I'm going to do more, mm. but at the moment, uh, passing yeah. that is, is my number. Uh, number what one. I found with um, the sandpaper, so you art Fisher, they, they're all almost identical. They got different grades. But they're almost um, we, uh, we, uh, the ones I've used is the 800. That's a, yeah. the, the finest one. The That's finest the one yeah. that we've got to um, to pass yeah. that. But the no, the, I've not tried the um, the the four. It's a four hundred. It's a four hundred. Yeah, I've not tried it's that. Similar again, but I think I, the, the thing to keep in mind is lots of people think that you will be able to layer a lot more on these papers, and I found you can actually layer less than pastel mat, and the reason being is because with pastel mat, it's it's like a fiber surface. So if you use a magnifying glass and look at the surface, you will see all tiny hairs interwoven in all different directions. Mm -hmm. And that really holds the pastel in. But when you use a, a sandpaper, so it's basically minuscule grit sand on the surface, it's just like mountains with valleys. And because they are rough, even the, the finest ones are rough, they take a lot of the pastel down into the surface very quickly. And then when you're trying to do another layer on top, you'll find that it's, it smudges and blends together where you've basically filled the two for the paper. It's so I found big yeah. expressive works are good good with it the sound. It work better with, the, um, with soft pastel than pastel pencil. Exactly right. Exactly. So people with soft pastel um, would find that perhaps more acceptable because it's a Definitely. Much easier yeah. thing to use it. But pastel yeah. pencil, I agree with you totally on that. Great. I agree on that. Any other tips? Have we got any other tips? Uh, um, the, well, the other thing that I would say, I don't know about Jason or this, but I've always been a believer of, especially in uh, animal portrait work and human portrait work to come to that, you do need to have accurate drawings. The drawing has to be accurate. Now, I've, I started out as a watercolour artist and, and uh, doing a lot of landscapes, and it wasn't so important. The, 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 you yeah. have to be a reasonable sketch. But, not so important, but in animals and um, portrait work, human portrait work, I, I'm a stickler for accuracy with your yeah. line drawings. If they're wrong, doesn't matter how good you are at colouring, you're not going to correct it. Yeah, so that's that's, yeah, exactly the same. I think the human is so used to looking into the faces of animals or other humans that if it's, especially if you're drawing on a small scale, if you're off by a millimetre or two, especially on the eyes, it, it's glaringly obvious to even non-artists that there's something wrong. And even, you know, they can't tell what it is. They know that doesn't look like whatever person it is or the, the animal face looks, looks wrong. And I think that brings up then an interesting question that I've had asked me all the time, is tracing wrong? Can you draw yourself or do you trace everything? Are you against using tools like um, the measuring tools or gridding? And lots of beginner artists have really got um, worries about all of that. You know, it, it stops some of them from doing pastels or oils completely. They but think it it's not doing artwork altogether, wouldn't it? Because, yeah. uh, Jason, because they're not going to get anywhere unless they do. That's um, it. I started off using the grid system. Yeah. Uh, 
drawing out the grids, you know. Yeah. And uh, it worked quite successfully for a while. And now we now use a, our own square drawing system, yeah. which we recommend. Uh, and I showed that, and I, I've done it several times uh, on video to show how it's done. That way, you get pretty accurate, but never absolutely accurate. It's, it's especially on human portraits, humans more than animals. Yes. Um, uh, but if you get pretty close during the process of um, using the pastels, that's when you can make your finer adjustments. Yeah. It's easier to do that than find your eye is completely wrong. And what we do it because you get into a hell of a... Have we lost the audio? Uh, I think we may have lost you, Jason, there, but I think it's caught up with us now. What were you saying there to add in? Um, I was just going to say that I personally, I've certainly got nothing against some people. All they want to do with their art is get to the coloring stage. If they want to trace it, they can do that. If they want to use one of the measuring devices, even Michelangelo was using devices all those and, ways. And, back. Um, um, John Constable did. Yeah. I've, and, seen, I've seen one of his uh, original squids. So they had to in. So yeah, exactly right. So I, I always say to people, if you think you're cheating doing that, then go to life classes and go to things and, and do what you think you need to do to, to do it your way. But, you know, with my Patreon art channel now, I've got to do free drawings, uh, fin finished drawings or paintings or whatever every month. So over the year, I'm doing 30, 36 drawings. I've done that for four years solid. So I'm way over the hundreds of drawings and a lot of them are quite large. They're really in depth as well. So sometimes, well, very frequently, I'll trace my image down on there because the amount of time that saves me, if I was doing that drawing, even though I show on YouTube various ways to freehand draw, basically to prove I can do it, you know, just to, to show that it would take me so long doing the drawing, almost as long as the, the painting itself, I could never get more than probably one out a month with all the video editing that goes with it. So I just say, you know, do what makes you happy because the art should make you happy at the end of the day. So I think that's it for the tips. I, I agree. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, guys. Um, OK, so moving on to Barbara's question. What is the difference to work from light to dark or from dark to light? And why would you suggest the one or the other technique? I mean, we've kind of we have kind of talked. That, we? We've kind of talked about this a fair amount, so I don't know how if there's anything you guys want to add to that. But I mean, we've kind of explained a little yeah. bit why. I think you know, we could why. just briefly say that if you want to work the light over the dark, probably pastel mat is your paper. If you want to work it more um, where you use it more as a coloured pencil kind of way of doing it, uh, the other way around then you could work with Andre and other papers. Would you agree with that, Colin? I, well, I think, again, it, it comes back to what we were talking about. When when we start, both started out, we were finding our feet. Yeah. And I found, coming from watercolour, I actually naturally... Exactly. ...got on with that. Because when, I mean, I'm talking about 1980. Five. Now that's a long time ago. Nothing about you couldn't no. pencil pencils, information, zeal. Yeah. So I didn't know how to use them. So naturally, I worked from the experience I already had, which was watercolor. And that was my basis. Now, so I carried on doing that. And yeah. Yeah. Doing that. You came from the oil side of it and came from another direction. We both met in the middle. Yeah. And I don't think it really matters, but I think it's important to express that, how people start out. I mean, nowadays they've got the, you and I and uh, many, many other artists to see on the uh, YouTube uh, and various mediums. You can see um, what we do and say, oh, I like that. I'll do it that way. Well, we didn't have that. I didn't no, exactly that right. I was just thrown in the deep end. I'm glad I was, but uh, I think that's really, that is the difference. Yeah, and to answer your question about the engre, um, what we found is with the engre, because it's a thinner paper and it's a different texture, the, the application is going to be slightly different and the amount of layers that you would get on an engre sheet of paper and pastel mat is 
I don't know whether we, you could have used the ombre with the dark to light press. That's what we was, yeah. Don't I think, think it would do no, it that way. No, because I tried, I probably tried pastels about 15 years ago, first attempt, I got the ombre, and I attacked it in a completely oil painting manner. So I went that mm -hmm. slightly darker under layer. And as soon as I was trying to put the details on top light, it wouldn't do it at yeah, all. I tried that for a good, good day or two in all different ways because of my R&D background. I, I like to try things out like that. And I got so frustrated. I put my pit pastel pencils in the drawer and shut the drawer for about 15 years. And I didn't reopen that until pastel mat came around. And that's just because I was attacking it and expecting it to work just like oil paint in. Mm. If I'd come from a coloured pencil background or watercolour background, yeah, I would have gone in that way. It would have worked that way. Mm. That's very, that's very, it's a very good really, point. Really, yeah. Come out on this, um, yeah. Well done.